Remember when Urkel decorated the Winslow's roof? <laughs> Let's go back. Tamagotchi, the of Y2K. Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome back to another TGIF Christmas. This year, we're going back to 1995 for the ABC TGIF lineup on Friday, December 15th. At the time, Jumanji was topping the box office, and the number one song was One Sweet Day by Mariah Carey and Boys to Men. And parents everywhere were scrambling to buy their kids pogs and beanie babies in time for Christmas morning. This year's TGIF Christmas lineup was the same as my video last year, with Family Matters at 8, Boy Meets World at 8.30, Step by Step at 9, and Hanging with Mr. Cooper at 9.30. It's a pretty solid lineup without any random one-season television shows, even though I do enjoy doing those as well. So I'm expecting big things. Without further ado, let's change our channels to ABC on December 15th, 1995 at 8pm for the Family Matters episode called Fa La 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 La. I want to design the Winslow roof. The episode begins with Urkel climbing up onto the roof with a box of Christmas lights. Carl comes up after him and says he's not decorating the roof because it'll triple his electric bill. Oh Carl, why do you gotta be such a Grinch? Urkel explains that it's a family tradition at his house and now that he's living with the Winslows, he was hoping to decorate their roof, but Carl isn't having any of it. After the intro, Harriet is decorating the living room, but saved the Christmas tree for last, but wouldn't you know it, Laura's too busy to help decorate the tree with her mom. Carl's sitting playing poker with his buddies when they start talking about their Christmas displays this year, and bragging about whose was better last year, but they all concede that it'll never be as good as Stephen Urkel's Christmas displays. They go on to make fun of Carl's decorations from last year and mention that the Channel 6 is doing a decorating contest this year and the winner will get $5,000, and Carl's eyes light up. Carl enters his house into the contest, but doesn't tell Urkel. Instead, he explains he's in the Christmas spirit now and wants Urkel to decorate his roof. Lying during Christmas, Carl? That's naughty list material right there. Although he did just help John McClane take down some German terrorists, so they kind of even each other out. This episode also prompts a very important question. Which 90s character would win a head-to-head -head Christmas decorating contest? Steve Urkel or Tim Taylor? Make your pick in the comments down below. Back to the show, Eddie comes downstairs and tells his grandma he's going to a fraternity Christmas party, but his mom thought he was going to stay and decorate the tree with her. But Eddie doesn't have time for such silly traditions. Harriet confides in Grandma Winslow that she feels like she's losing her children and it isn't Christmas without doing things like decorating the tree with the kids. On the roof, Urkel is finishing decorating and Carl presses the button to start it up, but Santa and the elf got a little bit of a Night at the Roxbury vibe going on for them. Back inside, Grandma Winslow's sneaking around to see what gifts she got when Eddie and Laura walk in. They want to know where her Christmas cookies are, but Grandma says she didn't make them this year because she figured they were too busy for such silly traditions. Oh damn, Grandma Winslow! They start to realize what they did to their mom and they start feeling some kind of awful. Back on the roof, Urkel and Carl return dressed as an elf and Santa, but uh-oh, Urkel isn't too happy when the judge committee shows up and he realizes Carl lied to him. When Urkel gets up to leave, there's a crack in the roof and... They could definitely use that $5,000 prize money now to fix the damages. With snow falling into the kitchen, Urkel sits there upset that Carl lied to him. Carl apologizes, and because there's only about a minute left, Urkel immediately forgives him. The episode ends with everyone opening gifts on Christmas morning, and they talk about how Eddie and Laura undecorated the tree last night so they could do it again with their mom. And everyone starts singing Joy to the World. And insert clever segue here. On to 8.30 with Boy Meets World, and just like usual, they don't play by the rules because their episode's a New Year's Eve episode. How dare they destroy the theme of this video? Before I get into this episode, I'm just going to touch quickly on the B-plot of this episode because it seemed forced and irrelevant. It features Mr. Turner and his friend Eli deciding to stay in for New Year's Eve. However, three of Turner's exes show up and they all end up gossiping on the couch and eating pizza before Mr. Turner leaves out of frustration. That's it. The whole thing takes up about two minutes of screen time throughout the episode and isn't really necessary. The main plot revolves around Cory, Topanga, Sean, and Eric going out for New Year's Eve. Sean tells Cory he got them a limo for the night because his uncle drives one. Eric is thrilled because he has a date with his friend's cousin, who just so happens to be Rebecca Alexa. Oh, you don't know? She's just a supermodel, you know, the jean girl? The jeans girl? Fast forward to that night and Cory and Eric are looking all spiffy when John comes in and says the ride's there. But it turns out it isn't a limo at all, it's actually a hearse. Because Eric's going downtown, his parents offer him to take their car since it's more reliable than his. But uh-oh, the car broke down and Eric returns home with Rebecca Alexa. The jeans girl? 
Uh oh, Cory, Tapang, and Sean are also back because there was a body in the back of the hearse so his uncle couldn't take them to the party. The five of them decide to go together on a subway. But dumb dumb Cory drops the fact that Eric just wants to kiss Rebecca at midnight in front of everyone to gain some popularity points. Upset that she's just a trophy to Eric, Rebecca hops off the subway and wouldn't you know it, the subway breaks down and they're trapped. It isn't lost on me that this is the same scenario that happened in last year's Family Matters Christmas episode. I'm on to you, Boy Meets World writers. Who wrote this episode? Carlos Mencia? Anyway, this guy comes over and realizes Cory isn't one to ride the subway often, and he tells him it usually takes a little while to fix the issue. But on a holiday, who knows how long it'll take. Sean is making the best of it and helps a woman deliver a baby in the other car. Does anybody here know anything about deliveries? You. Pizza guy, you have to do. Come on, come on. Eric's moping in the corner when Cory tries to talk to him and apologize, but Eric flips out and says he just wanted to have a good night. Cory fires back and says it isn't like he wants to be stuck there as well on his first New Year's Eve out, but he's with his friends so he's gonna make the best of it. Cory starts up a party on the subway train and Eric realizes he may have been a bit harsh and apologizes to Cory. The two brothers begin reminiscing on all their past lousy New Year's Eve experiences, but looking back they're fond memories. The countdown to midnight begins and Eric and Cory hug it out. Cory kisses Topanga and Eric kisses some random waitress girl. We're into season 3 now of Boy Meets World and Eric still hasn't made the full switch into Dum Dum. I'm curious what episode it finally happens. Speaking of families fighting, it's now 9pm with Step by Step's Christmas episode called The Fight Before Christmas. The episode opens with Cody showing off his car he decorated for a Christmas vehicle contest, but he hooks it up to the main transformer and with 100,000 volts of electricity he electrocutes himself. But don't worry, 90s sitcoms have Looney Tune physics. And also, sorry for you Cody fans out there, but that's the last time we see him in this episode. The first story centers around JT who's working as a Christmas tree salesman to earn enough money for a skiing trip. This older guy who he's working with runs into a kid who wants to get a Christmas tree for his mom. But the one he wants is $60 and he just doesn't have that kind of money. The older guy offers for him to work there so he can have the tree. Back at the house, the parents are having some old family friends over for Christmas, which includes their son Matt, who spent a lot of time with Al when they were children. A picture of you and Matt Crawford taking a bath together when you were little. <laughs> Al believes her parents are trying to set her up and she hates being set up. You just know at this point that dude's gonna show up all handsome and such. The family friends show up and the mom is that mom from Richie Rich who falls for the butler. And Matt comes in and he's that dude who pops up in all of these network shows back in the 90s. Al still isn't into him though and as it turns out Matt isn't into her either. Luckily for them Al's mom got them tickets to go see the ballet. How fun! As they're outside waiting in the cold to get into the ballet they begin to argue how neither of them want to be there. When Al says she's leaving to go ice skating, Matt perks up because he's a hockey player, so instead of going their separate ways, the two decide to ditch the ballet and go skating. Back at the tree farm, a couple wants to buy the kid's tree, but the older guy pushes them not to. Then when JT tries to sell the tree to a mother and her two kids, he tells them that the tree's haunted. After scaring them off, he explains to JT that he's saving the tree for a kid who's been helping him out. JT! There's more to life than money! Back at the house, the two fathers come out to find a car in the driveway running. Uh-oh. If the cars are revving, don't come a... Don't... Don't come a... Just leave it alone. Inside, Matt and Al are making out, and Matt doesn't help the situation by saying this. Yeah, yeah, we were just sucking a little face. The two fathers begin to fight with one another, and they all leave for a motel. Al goes with them because her dad is just acting straight up cray cray. Over at the tree farm, the boss brings over a guy who wants to buy the tree, but the older guy says it's sold, but the dude starts out bidding him. That's when JT comes over and says that he already sold the tree and gives him $100 of his own money. He bought the tree for the kid, now that's the Christmas spirit. I mean it's no saving Nakatomi Plaza, but it's alright. In the kitchen, Frank is carving the turkey like a maniac when Carol comes home wondering where the Crawfords are. He tells her he threw them out because their kid's a pervert and he caught him in the car making out with Al. You caught Al and Matt making out. So you threw your friend and his family out of our house on Christmas Eve? Frank goes down to the hotel to apologize and the two fathers shake on it. The episode ends with the family singing Joy to the World, which if you're keeping count at home, that's now two out of three endings that ended the same way. Let's see if it happens again with Hanging with Mr. Cooper at 9.30 to cap off the 1995 TJF Christmas lineup. Mark is in the living room untangling the Christmas lights when the girls come home with a fake white Christmas tree. He says he won't allow a fake tree in his home and tells everyone to grab their coat because they're gonna go cut down a tree at the old farm he used to go to as a kid. Maybe because I watched the episode late at night, but my brain was not functioning right. And while they were driving, I was wondering where the snow was. It took me a moment to remember that it takes place in Oakland. Anyway, after a two hour drive, they arrive at Hucklebuck's Christmas Tree Farm, but it isn't quite like Mark remembered. 
Turns out Mr. Hucklebuck lost a lot of his property to gambling, and this is all he has now. Instead of cookies and hot chocolate, he offers them some yummy soda water and jerky. Remember, I just had a, a, a big reindeer. Um, what's his name, Sparky? Whatever happened to Sparky? You ever eaten him? All the Christmas trees that are there are little Charlie Brown style Christmas trees, and despite it being $42, the girls pressure him into buying it because they don't want to have to come two hours for nothing, so he buys it. On the way home, they run out of gas because the fuel meter on Vanessa's car is busted. Geneva spots a bright star up ahead. Turns out it's the North Star Inn. And the guy who runs the place is a bundle of joy. Welcome to the North Star Inn, your home away from home. Can I help you? The hotel phone doesn't work, they don't have any rooms available, and the closest gas station is 5 miles away, which won't open until 6am, so they're kinda stuck. The guy offers them blankets so they can crash in the lobby. During the night, they're awoken by a guy breaking in and robbing the register. They all catch him, but he says he doesn't have a gun or anything, he just needs the money. The hotel attendant doesn't seem to care too much. You're being robbed. Oh, like I need this. The robber tells Mark that he can't afford to go to a hospital and his wife's in the car in labor. This is where I started to realize this was the story of Christmas. They followed a bright star, got denied a room at the inn, and now they have a pregnant woman. Luckily, Vanessa's a medical technician and helps deliver the baby. No word yet if he can turn water into wine, but that may come up in a later episode. You'll never guess what happens next. Three men show up. Good evening, gentlemen. Do you have a reservation? We sure do. We're the Wiseman brothers. They have plenty of food in the car, a phone, and they offer one of their rooms to the new parents. And just like many Christmas sitcom episodes, they make the best of their situation and celebrate being together. I mean, after all, we have everything we need right here. We have the people we love. The episode ends with them all singing Silent Night, which is kind of disappointing as we almost ended three episodes tonight with Joy to the World. And there you have it, the 1995 TGIF Christmas lineup. I hope this gave you a nice trip down memory lane and helped you get into the spirit of the holidays. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. For everyone who likes this video, may your home light up as bright as Tim Taylor and the Winslow's home. Minus the damage. And what better way to end this year's video than this? <coughs> Joy to the world. Uh, I'm just messing with y'all. Merry Christmas.